I'm Saez Kamaladeen. I'm sitting here with Professor Emeritus Dr. Arthur Dawkins, the creator of the Jazz Studies Program at Howard University. I'm going to read a statement and then continue with our discussion afterward. At the end of the American Civil War, a number of institutions of higher learning were founded to accommodate the progeny of the formerly enslaved people of direct African ancestry in America and their European American enslavers. These institutions were tasked by their European American creator founders with the training of their unwanted, unaccepted children in order to make them more suitable servants for the true members of American society. Today, the institutions of these that have survived are called historically black colleges and universities, also known as HBCUs. As designed by the European American, American founders, one of the primary goals of these institutions was to completely convince the Negroes who attended them that there was nothing in the African aspect of their culture or past that was of value or worthy of serious scholarly study, continuance, or replication. Nowhere was this concept more stringently fostered and applied than in the field of the arts, especially music. A few of the more important concepts these institutions were designed to impart to their Negro students were, number one, Europe, European people, European culture, and the overarching European aesthetic are the first, best, and most significant in human history. Every other group, their culture and aesthetic influence is of secondary or far less importance. Number two, nothing that exists in the African past of the Negroes attending those institutions is worthy of any scholarly study, consideration, documentation, or continuance within the context of the education they are to receive at the HBCUs. Three, everything of value that African people know or have was received from their European masters. They intrinsically have nothing to offer this society as evidenced by the lack of respect that culture is given in educational institutions in general. As a product of this educational imperative, the only course of action for a Negro trained under this system is to once again go back to their own community and teach this insanity to their less educated brothers and sisters. Five, success in American life requires the ingestion and living out of the previously mentioned concepts. At some point, everyone who has thrived at HBCUs has been infected with a manner of thinking that HBCU attendees have had to grapple with throughout the decades. The inevitable result being the receipt of a degree that demonstrates a crippling of the creative human spirit. Among the top existing HBCUs, Howard University stands out in stark relief against the background of other African American universities struggling to create and educate rather than indoctrinate present day students with the educational philosophies and methodologies of the past. Let us look at the current trend surrounding the study of the African American art form called jazz at Howard University. Howard University was the first HBCU to offer a bachelor's degree in jazz studies. This was first granted in 1979. By the 1980s, Howard was among the top 5% of all universities offering bachelor's and master's degrees in jazz, and many of these programs continue to thrive. To date, more than 500 students have received degrees in jazz studies from Howard University. Donald Byrd founded the Howard University Jazz Studies Program in 1968 and resigned from that position in 1971. After three years of relative instability, Fred Irby III was appointed coordinator of instrumental music and created the Howard University Jazz Ensemble in 1974. In 1975, Dr. Arthur Dawkins was appointed Director of Jazz Studies. His assignment was to design a jazz curriculum, hire jazz faculty, and administer the program. 
His goal was to create a comprehensive course of study based on the mandate of the 1968 student re revolt, where the students, the Howard University students, demanded a university education that sprang from an African-centered worldview and information base. This directive for a cultural shift came from University President James Cheek through Donald Byrd to Arthur Dawkins. Very early in his term, Dr. Dawkins brought in pianist John Malachi, with whom he had worked along with bassist Keeter Betts in local engagements. Mr. Malachi was not well known by his colleagues, but proved to be an excellent teacher of piano as well as harmony. Reverend Stone, PhD, was invaluable to the initial structure of the curriculum and, pr and provided direction in the study of improvisation, arranging, and academic research. Near the end of his tenure at Howard University, Dr. Dawkins was pleased to see one of the most dynamic vocal programs in the country come into existence thank to, thanks to world-class teacher artist Kenetra Miller. As Director of Jazz Studies, Dr. Dawkins participated in recruiting students, secured and administered, ad, administered grants, and sought financial support from large corporations. Much of his research is currently housed in the Moreland Spingarn Research Center Digital Library on the campus of Howard University. At Howard University and other HBCU institutions, there were and continue to be difficulties regarding finances, consistent, reliable administrative support, and effectively spreading the cultural significance of jazz. Most of the Department of Music faculty members are trained in the Western European art music tradition and are not knowledgeable or motivated to teach anything outside of that cumbersome tradition. Howard University responded to intense student rebellion through which an African-centered curriculum was demanded. In spite of receiving university support, music faculty resentment to any substantive change in procedure remained. Another major issue at HBCUs is competition between music ensembles. Very few universities offer faculty scholars opportunities to teach jazz courses based on their own personal experience. Support from the administration was important for the success of the program. Also, there was a need for the general acceptance of the jazz idiom. Dr. Dawkins' first hire was also a PhD, thus the faculty during the early stages of the jazz studies program included two PhD faculty members. The Howard University Oral Jazz History Project is an attempt to research and document the rich musical tradition of African American people by, in the tradition of Sankofa, reaching back to retrieve the future. Uh, doctor? <laughs> what, do you, what do you think about what I just said? <clears throat> I think uh, uh, one of the crucial things about the the initial, initial years of, of the program was that Donald Byrd uh, was the individual that uh, received the approval and uh, the mandate to start this program. And uh, I'm not sure, in fact, I'm, I am sure that I would not have been, uh, first of all, offered the, that opportunity because at that time they were looking, the, 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 this university, not, not so much the music faculty, but this university under Dr. Cheek uh, was looking for a world-class jazz artist, and that's what they got with Donald Byrd. So that kind of worked into the, to satisfying the demands of the students who really were responsible for this program. Uh, had not the students rebelled in the way they did, and which included taking over the, the uh, fine arts building where, where you teach now. Uh, the, those students made it necessary to, to make radical changes in, in the music. Uh, uh, Donald Byrd was, was here for, 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 for three years, which was not enough time to establish and, and satisfy the uh, uh, academic uh, demands of, a, of any kind of program, and especially in an open university. Uh, 
the music faculty did not uh, readily accept uh, 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 the fact that, that jazz could be a structured program uh, that could offer degrees uh, uh, just like the degree I got in music education. Uh, so we were among the first to, uh, to establish a, a curriculum that uh, both satisfied the accrediting agencies, uh, which were, it, it was new to them, the accrediting agencies, to, to evaluate jazz as a, as a serious study. So we were able to satisfy enough the um, accredit, accrediting agencies and the administration of Howard University that we warranted a place in the curriculum. Uh, and I think that uh, the, the, the fact that over 500 students have received degrees from Howard University in jazz is phenomenal, and I'm very, very, very happy that that, that happened. Do you think that the uh, a competitive spirit might have been part of the lack of accept, full acceptance of the degree program in the early stages that, given a choice, that music students chosen, uh, choosing between the uh, more uh, Western European art music tradition that had been Howard's history since its inception, and this new uh, opportunity to study music of our own ethnic background and heritage. Do you think that there was a fear that uh, jazz would take over uh, as it has? Yeah, well, I'm not sure if that was, that was the case, but I know that I could not have gotten a degree here uh, at Howard University or any other university in jazz when I got my bachelor's degree in, in, in music education. So it was up until the 1970s that, um, that uh, anybody could have, could have gotten a degree in, in jazz. Now, I was always concerned, especially with minority students, with parents who were not familiar enough with the, with the idiom uh, and uh, thinking that they're gonna take a chance on spending a great deal of money on their students. My parents didn't have that option because only, the only degree I could have gotten was music education. Uh, but uh, in the 1970s, with the demands made by black students, they're saying, we'll take a chance on it. It's, it's new. We, we will have a, 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 we'll make ourselves, and it worked out that way. Well, um, I get that sense today that uh, as I spoke of in the piece, that there's a competitive sense when, a, a, say, a fine trumpet player comes in, that uh, he has to make a decision whether to go so-called classical, uh, Western, European, Western European art music, or jazz. Mm -hmm. And a fine trumpet player is a fine trumpet player, but then you have all the ensembles that you have to rehearse for. Mm -hmm. You have the different um, theoretical studies that you must undertake. So you have to kind of choose. And everything we, in our department, we need high quality performers everywhere. Yes. And so I, I sense that maybe it's unspoken, maybe I'm exaggerating in my own mind, but I feel like there is some competitive sense, well, you know, you have to make a choice. You're gonna do this, you're gonna do that. And I just wonder, uh, do you think that has anything to do with the differing numbers of students and the acceptance of the discipline, jazz studies, by the faculty? Uh, uh, yes, I think so. And, and, and I think particularly at this school, which I'm f most familiar with, uh, students can see a high quality uh, involvement in, in, in jazz through, through, through its various uh, uh, internationally known ensembles and the, uh, the, the jazz faculty. So many times when a new student comes, they, they can see that uh, uh, without uh, a lot of uh, uh, unnecessary uh, coaching and, and, and coaching. True. Mm. So I think that uh, most of the ensembles are, are, are really high quality because of high quality students and high quality faculty. For sure. Uh, what do you think about the <clears throat> place of the music, jazz, in the society? and the way that either helps or hurts when we try to recruit for jazz study students? 
Well, unfortunately, uh, where even Howard was among the first to, to offer this as a, as a, as a field of study, uh, by the 1990s, 99% of other universities offered it. Now, uh, even though we were pioneers, uh, 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 it, 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 when we started, the uh, uh, students have, have many opportunities. There are many opportunities to, to go to many other universities that they didn't have at that time. Fortunately, the ones that we got uh, in the early years with Wallace Roney and Jerry Allen and, and that quality were, they made such international names for themselves and for this university, we are still riding on that uh, uh, coattails of those. Uh, the future of the, the program is, uh, right now, just to be totally honest, our census is way down. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't have even 100 students that are, who are music majors. Mm -hmm. What needs to happen, do you think, to turn that trend around and to make sure that the Jazz Studies program is uh, well, well uh, populated? Well, I guess this is not obvious, but uh, um, scholarships for, for these talented students who would go to another university uh, uh, for a less quality, uh, <laughs> yes sir. <laughs> Uh, a less quality education yes, sir. Uh, would make us competitive. Uh, the problem that we have now is that we, we don't have the financial resources to attract these students, even the local students who, 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 who decide to go to, to one of the local universities uh, uh, because these other places offer money. So I think that's one, that's one of the first things. Because faculty is important too, but I think this faculty here is one of the best in the world. So that's not a big deal. So I think it's a matter of having enough money and uh, enough you know, resources to attract these quality students. Is there a final statement you'd like to make about what we're talking about right now? I think that this whole uh, jazz old history uh, project that uh, that I initiated, uh, started when you were a student here. Uh, I am so happy to see that uh, this program, I mean this project, is thriving and is going to gain a large amount of, uh, of publicity. Good. I'm Saez Kamaladeen. I am the, an associate professor here at Howard University teaching jazz history, African and African American music history, and flute. And I'm here with the great Professor Emeritus Dr. Arthur Dawkins. Thank you. <laughs>